In today's video, I'm going to give you my recommendations when looking for motorized bike kits. Whether you're on a budget looking for the best value and you're willing to take a risk, or you're a new builder who simply wants the most reliable thing you can find. Both categories are going to get covered in this video. Welcome back motorized bike enthusiasts. Not only am I going to give you my recommendations on various different websites and kits, I'm also going to give you the information that I have available so that if you're looking for a kit in the future and these ones aren't available, you'll know what to look for. Newer builders can really have a hard time sifting through the random assortment of kits available for motorized bikes. And despite what you might hear from some people, these kits are not all the same. There are a lot of differences from one kit to the next. They can be subtle or they can be extreme. So right off the bat, let's get two categories out of the way. These are the main two categories we're going to focus on in this video. Category one would be the new builder who's simply looking for the most reliable thing that they can purchase. Category two would be somebody who's maybe willing to take a risk. Maybe it's not your first motorized bike kit and you're willing to take a gamble on some of these kits, which might sacrifice quality for really good value. Now, if you are a category one buyer, I would recommend avoiding the big box store websites. These are websites which are not specifically focused on selling motorized bikes. So I wouldn't go to Amazon, Walmart, I wouldn't go to eBay if you're a new buyer. If it's your first kit, avoid these websites. The reason these stores are going to be a bit better for new builders or somebody who's just looking for quality is simply because they're focused on motorized bikes, so they have a reputation to uphold. They don't necessarily want to sell junk. Yes, they'll still have some junk and some motor kits of lower quality, but generally they're not going to be selling the absolute bare bones, cheapest quality thing they can find. As far as which websites I would trust, it's a general rule of thumb that if a website takes uh, PayPal, or Amazon Pay, then you're probably going to be good to go. I've never had an issue buying stuff online from a website that takes PayPal, nor have I had an issue with Amazon Pay. Both of these services provide really good customer protection if you don't get your parts or you get the wrong stuff. Okay, so if a website takes one of these two payment methods, I feel safe buying from them. Uh, and of course, anything on this list does. So I can vouch for BicycleEngines.com, GasBike.net, and BikeBerry. A second thing to watch out for, if you plan on going to gasbike.net, make sure you type in the proper address because there's a shady website out there trying to take advantage of their name. And if you go to gasbikes.net, which is plural with an S, it's going to take you here. And if you click on any of these links, which might look tempting to a new buyer, you're probably going to a website which is going to get you some malware. So be careful. I don't think this has anything to do with the real gasbike.net. I just think it's somebody trying to take advantage of their name. Before we start digging into the kits on the dedicated websites, I do want to let you guys know that in this video, at least, we're going to be focusing on just the two-stroke base performance kits, but I'm also not going to be looking at the four-strokes or the electrics. Sorry, guys, I just don't have any experience with those, so I couldn't give you any information. The reason why I've stuck with the two-stroke kits for years is, well, there's a number of reasons. First, price and availability. They're cheaper. They're everywhere. Modifications and upgrades. They're easier to modify, they're easier to upgrade. And information. For doing modifications and upgrades or diagnosing problems, it's a lot easier to find the information you're looking for online simply because a lot more people have them and they've already posted about it. So as a new builder, buying from one of the dedicated websites is nice because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of what you're doing. Be it you're going to pay a premium, that's just a bullet you got to bite if you don't have the information to know what you're looking at. For the most part, you can purchase one of their BBR tuning kits and know that you're getting quality components, relatively speaking. Their price is still a little steep. I don't think this kit's worth $190, but you are pretty much getting the best out of everything you can for a stock kit. I'll explain more on that in a moment, but the problem here is there's a catch. For $10 less, they have this basic engine kit down here, $180. And some new builders who don't know any better might click on this and say, well, it's only a $10 difference. I'm sure it's still fine. It is a night and day difference. The hardware coming on this kit is garbage for the price. It's got six millimeter mounting studs. Those are the small ones, and they snap off really easy. It's got Phillips and flathead case bolts. 
that's bad. These strip out really easy. They're a major headache when they do. It's got a smaller intake, which is less performance. It's got a shorter stroke, less performance. And generally, the hardware you see available with this kit is nothing special. For that price of $180, you could go on Amazon if you knew what you're looking for and get something with much better quality of parts and performance, which we will probably do in this video. So avoid this kit completely. And BikeBerry, if you're listening, just stop selling this one. There's a good chance that some of your bad reputation is coming from a kit like this. If you're going to charge that much, don't sell this. That's bad. A new builder would buy this, the hardware would break right away, and they would say BikeBerry is crap because of a motor like this. But on the flip side, if you paid 10 more dollars, and yes, like I said, I still think this is a bit high, but the hardware and quality of parts you're getting in this kit is a night and day difference. If a new builder was to buy this as their first kit, I don't think they would really have much to complain about unless they just outright screwed it up. A motor kit like this is going to have better hardware. The case bolts and screws are all Allen heads. Those are harder to strip out, easier to remove and insert. It's got the wider mounting points, which means this is going to fit on more modern bikes without always having to use the universal adapter. Big plus, especially on a tight build. It also has the larger mounting hardware. This is going to use 8mm mounting studs. Those are a lot harder to snap. They're just a lot more secure. You can tighten your engine down more without it moving around. Major bonus. I've noticed the red wire on these CDIs generally indicates the higher quality CDI. Over time, these don't tend to crack. They're sealed. The seal, the glue they use, holds up better over time. I don't know if there's any more performance in these, but the red ones just seem to last longer. Their integrity is better. The magneto that's going to come with this is going to be the high voltage magneto. It means you're going to have a bigger spark. Let's look at a few other things which they show here that come in this kit, which do not come in the base kits. They're giving you a three-pronged spark plug. I don't see any problem with that. Honestly, I think spark plug upgrades in these motors is kind of gimmicky. The performance different is negligible at best, but hey, it can't hurt to have a better spark plug. They're coming with a copper head gasket. These seal up better. Open transfers, this tells me it's a G series cylinder, maybe a G4. 40 millimeter intake, I love having a 40 millimeter intake. It's easier to match these different motors if you are porting, but it's just wider, so it means more airflow, more performance. Here's the Super Magneto as we discussed, more voltage, bigger spark. The uh, wider mounting point, the eight millimeter mounting studs, I can tell just by looking at this that that's eight millimeter. And uh, what else we got? We got the heavy duty hex bolts, I already mentioned that, the high performance CDI, so it is high performance, so they claim. It says 25% higher power output. I don't know how true that is, but I will take their word for it. And yes, they verify here that it's the eight millimeter mounting studs. My suggestion if you're buying from BikeBerry as a new category one builder for quality is to go with their BBR tuning series. Personally, I would stick with the base 6680cc version. I would not go with the bigger versions until you're more experienced with motorized bikes simply because these bring in an entire different level of things you have to start worrying about. The 66 and 80 cc's have been around longer. They've got more of the bugs worked out. They're a safer bet for a category one builder who just wants quality and reliability. Okay, unfortunately, we're going to skip gas bike. First off, they do not provide pictures that are large enough to give you any detail about their product. And even when I try and click on the picture, which provides an up close, or at least looks like it does, it just glitches out the website and doesn't do anything. I will vouch for their parts because their parts and the detail available for them as being basic CNC machine parts I feel is a good buy, but not their kits. Unless they start providing better pictures and a better description and a less broken website, I would avoid gasbikes.net. Moving on to bicycleenginekits.com. Knock out this BT80 real quick. It's got a one-piece jug, a unique intake and exhaust port, and nothing that screams by me. It also appears to have smaller 6mm mounting studs, which I'm also going to assume means it has the smaller mounting point. $180? This is not something I would want to buy. A one-piece jug is a pain to work with. If you want to examine your piston and cylinder, you have to take off the exhaust and intake and the whole jug just to see what's going on in there. And that's really annoying. It also reduces your ability to upgrade it with a larger head for better cooling. The cooling fins on this one, for some reason, are going off to the side, which makes no sense whatsoever. If you want to upgrade your exhaust or intake, good luck with that because it has a unique intake and a unique exhaust port. Uh, 
this is just not a motor I would recommend for any reason. But if you happen to have one for some reason, I will say that the quality of the motor looks good. Going through their entire line of engines, really the only one I would focus on when it comes to BicycleEngines.com is their Firestorm Zeta 80. This is my personal go-to motor when I want something that's just got performance and reliability. Now, you might previously know this as the Zeta 4440. However, the Firestorm Edition has one upgrade over the standard 4440, which really does make it worth the price, in my opinion. $170 might still be a little steep for some of you guys out there, so don't worry, we're not done with the list. However, if you can afford the $170 price tag, do know that you are getting good quality, decent performance. If your bike is going to be a 26 inch, I would go with the 36 tooth sprocket. If you're a 27 and a half or 29 er I would stick with the 44 tooth sprocket, as mentioned when available, because unfortunately all of the options are out of stock. About a week and a half ago, they were in stock. And keep an eye on this motor, because as soon as they get them available, they immediately sell out. And there's a good reason for that. The hardware that comes with the kit itself is nothing to brag about. It's still the two bolt chain tensioner, which kind of sucks, but that's an easy and cheap upgrade. And the carburetor is not a real NT speed carburetor. It's a generic China carburetor, but no big deal. Also an easy and cheap upgrade. Uh, one bit of hardware, which is nice to have in this kit is the trigger lock clutch lever. This is nice for people with small hands, younger, riders, it's a lot easier to reach the trigger than it is to reach the button style. Major benefits of using the Zeta 80 motor is starting from the top, you've got a two-piece jug, which means you have a head and a cylinder separate. Good for upgrades, good for performance down the road. Uh, it also makes it really convenient to check your piston and cylinder for damage, wear, and just any odds and ends without taking off the intake, the exhaust, and the whole jug. The cylinder included is a G-Series, I believe, which is just an upgrade over the older stock ones for a number of reasons. They have the open transfer ports and the wider, improved intake port, which is, of course, 40 millimeters. With that, you're also going to have the 40 millimeter stroke, which is just going to be a little more performance and a bit more torque. So getting up off the line is just going to be a bit easier, a little less pedaling. We've got all Allen head bolts for the case, and we've got eight millimeter mounting studs, which are spaced 40 millimeters apart, which means this will fit onto more modern bikes easier without using the universal adapter, as mentioned previously. Moving on to the big box websites, this part of the video is mainly to give you the information when you're looking for these kits, a lot of which we've already gone over, but this will definitely help burn it into your mind. It's a good chance that by the time you're watching this video, the particular kits I recommend from these websites are not going to be available, so you'll need to know what a good alternative is, or at least what to avoid. I've discussed already why we avoid the BT-80, and I want to discuss why we avoid the Motos. I have this particular kit, and at a glance, for the price, this looks like a good kit. And for a Category 2 buyer who just wants some value and is willing to take that small risk, this might still be a good option, but there are some major downsides. One of which is a safety issue, which you need to know about if you purchase this motor kit. Explained to me by many viewers, and then I experienced it myself, is the Petcock design on this particular kit is bad quality. It doesn't mean that every petcock with this design is going to be a bad kit to choose from, but the Motos one for sure is definitely defective, as this nut popped off on me on my way home from work, causing the petcock to drop, and it drained the entire tank of gas onto my hot motor, which could have been a very bad situation. So we want to avoid this kit altogether. If you're category two looking for value, just know that you might need to figure out a different way to deal with your petcock because there's a good chance yours is going to fail. Other reasons why I don't care much for this kit. First off, when I rode mine for the first time, it made a loud tapping sound. Turns out that the cylinder was hitting the head because the base gasket was too thin, so I had to get a thicker base gasket. Also, it's a one-piece jug. We don't like that. Smaller intake, we don't like that. It does, however, have 8mm mounting studs, which is great, but unfortunately, the mounting points itself still thin, so you're going to be using the universal adapter anyways. Now, this is a kind of kit that I would avoid out of principle, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but I also want to tell you guys how to look at the reviews to figure out which ones are useful information and which ones are just angry people who mess something up. 
As far as the motor kit itself, the reason why I would not purchase this is because this is clearly a computer generated image and anybody who's too lazy to put an actual picture of their motor in the kit is not somebody who's going to get my business. They're either trying to hide something or they just don't have any knowledge about what they're selling. And when it comes to looking at reviews to find out which ones are worth considering, look for reviews that talk more about what came with the kit, not necessarily the quality of the kit. With these cheap China motors, stuff breaks all the time. It might be your fault, it might not be your fault. It's going to happen. You're probably going to break a bolt, especially on the rag joint. And as soon as somebody breaks something, strips out a thread, they immediately go to the comments or the review section and made it known that the kit is junk and the quality is terrible. Well, we already know that for these cheaper motors, the quality is pretty bad. But what we want to know is if we're actually getting what we're looking at. Like in this review, it does not at all look like what you're buying that is useful information. So keep an eye out for that. Look for reviews that say whether or not the kit came with what it was supposed to and if it came with what's shown in the picture. Another really annoying thing, especially for new buyers, is when they come with stupid little options like this. Now what I'm looking at here is a generic motor kit. Nothing special, but for the price, I think it's worth it for a Category 2 buyer. Somebody who's willing to take a risk for a good value. $125 is not the end of the world for the quality you're getting. Like I said, it used to be cheaper in the past, but that's just not the way it is anymore. Unfortunately, there's this annoying little thing right here that says size. And it has two options. An 80cc two-stroke, which didn't change anything. And an 80cc two-stroke silver, which still really didn't change anything. The price changed by a few cents, but the delivery date, free shipping, and the picture is all the same. I'm willing to bet that the description is pretty much going to give the same generic, useless information. So that's an annoying thing that comes with these kits. And when they have stuff like this, just avoid that selection, if at all possible. Because there's a chance that you, you're going to pick the wrong one, and the kit's going to show up not as advertised. When it comes to shipping and delivery, also pay attention on things like Amazon. The delivery date for a kit like this is fine. One to two weeks. That's okay, especially for this time of year. But free shipping. A lot of times they'll offer a good price here, and if you're not paying attention, they'll tack on an extra $20 to $30 in shipping, which just doesn't make it worth it anymore. The Sutec is kind of an oddball because it's one of those motors that at a glance, if I looked at this, I would not recommend it because 6mm mounting studs, the smaller intake, and it's going to be a shorter stroke, not a 40mm stroke. But having owned this motor and used it a lot, I know that it's got good performance and it's a reliable motor. It still might be a bit of a gamble because it could be that I got one of the good ones, but everybody I've ever talked to in comments about this particular motor says that they like their Sutec. So it's a good bet that if you're buying this particular brand of motor, you're going to get a decent motor. The performance might not be stellar. It's not quite as peppy as the Zeta 40. This has always just been my go-to motor for reliability when I just need to get up and go somewhere. This is a good example of why the cheapest bike berry kit and the cheapest gas bikes kit was just a terrible value. For $150 with free shipping, you're pretty much getting the same kit. However, this particular kit has two notable upgrades. A 4-bolt chain tensioner, which is safer and more secure. And it appears to have a G-series cylinder. So I noticed every cylinder that has these little circles um, in the casting on the fins has always been a G-series. And those I've just known to be better cylinders. Which means there's a chance that's a 40 millimeter intake, but I wouldn't count on it. It does unfortunately still have 6 millimeter mounting studs, which is just a major no-go in my opinion. If you're on a bare budget, the lowest budget, you're going to get 6 millimeter mounting studs. There's no way around that. One little exception I've noticed when it comes to the 6mm mounting studs on these kits, if you notice yours comes with black mounting studs that are 6mm, that might be okay. As the black hardware is generally a higher quality steel that can withstand the stress of the motor a bit better, and these don't strip out. I believe these smaller 6mm mounting studs, the black ones, are what came on my original Sutec, which is why they've never broken. Now we've gone ahead and skipped ahead because I know you guys want to just know what do I recommend right now buying on Amazon. But it was important that you know what we're looking for in motors and what we're looking against. Now this is a YD100. This is the exact same one I have on the Basset Blaster that you guys have seen in a bunch of my videos. And keep in mind that before I started doing all the crazy modifications, this motor didn't give me any problems whatsoever. Good performance, good reliability. But there are some caveats about the YD100, which is why I usually don't recommend this motor to new builders. That being said, 
if you're willing to look up information about this motor and be thorough, this is the best, in my opinion, current buy that you can get on Amazon for $160 with free shipping and about a one month shipping date because it's, you know, it's near Christmas so everything's longer. The performance and quality of this engine kit is spot on. It is a full engine kit so you will be getting everything you need but with this kit you're going to be getting Allen head case mounting or case bolts. You're going to get 8 millimeter studs with the wider spacing of 40 millimeters to fit more modern bikes. Upgraded CDI. It's got the upgraded magneto, high voltage. This has a real NT speed carburetor with a larger jet and a bigger throttle piston. Um, spark plugs generic, you're going to upgrade that, but it has a bigger bore piston and cylinder. Now it is a one piece setup, which is a headache, but at the moment it's really the only option when it comes to these 50 millimeter bores without going too crazy. Here's an alternative listing for the YD100. This one's by CDH Power. It's pretty much the same motor, same hardware, same performance. The price is the same and the availability is a little better at the time of recording this video. However, the cylinder and piston is not yet installed on the motor. This is good for us actually because you need to examine the cylinder and you need to make sure the piston's on right anyways. So this just eliminates one step and in my opinion is a better buy. Now we can get lost in eBay forever. I'm going to make a few quick suggestions here, but there are some things that stand out immediately, like our very first listing for motorized bikes of $120. I won't buy out of principle simply because the picture of the motor shows that the carburetor is on upside down, which tells me that this person has no idea what they're selling. Try to avoid anything that says 50cc. The performance difference, which might not seem like much on paper, is quite a bit in real life. Uh, every person I've ever seen with a 50cc two-stroke build just says it has no power and it's really slow. Now this one on eBay has stood out for a few reasons. First off, the seller doesn't have a lot of feedback, but all the feedback they do have is positive, and it looks like from these reviews that they're selling just motors, at least on this particular account. Now you might want to dig into that more to see if it's worth your time, but I do notice that on this generic $110 kit you are getting an upgraded G-Series cylinder. Even if everything else on the kit is just of standard cheap quality, having the G-Series cylinder is a plus in my opinion, and I do think that this is worth $110 with free shipping. Now here we see something that looks promising. This is from a seller with a lot of positive feedback. Here that looks like 8mm mounting studs and a wider mounting for the motor to the bike. This is a G-series cylinder and that looks like a 40mm intake. This probably also means it has a 40mm stroke but I cannot guarantee that and as long as this is a full kit and not just the motor we're good to go. However with the pictures I see on here I'm guessing that this is just the motor. It does say motorized bike, or it's a motor engine kit set, but I don't see anything to guarantee that it comes with the entire set, because you kind of need that. If you were, however, just replacing a motor and you didn't need to do all the hardware, I think this is a good thing to keep an eye on. It is unfortunate. It looks like this is a universal seller who just dabbles in a little bit of everything. And that's something I try to avoid if I can. So now I'm going to sum up the video into my two recommendations on which motor I would choose for both category of builders. Starting with category one, somebody who simply wants the most reliable thing that I recommend, that would be the Firestorm Zeta 80. Unfortunately, at the time of recording this video, it's out of stock, but this is common because this is the motor I simply recommend to every new builder who ever asks what motor they should get. I point them to this one, and then it goes out of stock. But don't worry because BicycleEngines.com, they always restock it, so keep checking every week or so for availability. This is simply put the most reliable motor. It's my go-to motor for the price. You get all good quality hardware. Relatively speaking, we are still talking about China parts here, but this one just has the best in my experience. And it has the upgraded cylinder over the older Zeta 4440 design. For our category two builders and category one, if you can't wait for stock to come in, on the Zeta 4440s. I would personally recommend the YD100, specifically this one linked from Bicycle Motor Works Store. Now remember, these are probably going to go out of stock when this video goes live. It generally happens when I talk about motors, but I recommend this for Category 2s because, well, it's a great value for the quality of parts and the 
performance for the price. It's actually $10 less than the Firestorm, but the reason I don't recommend it to new builders is because the caveats with this motor. You're not sacrificing any quality in the hardware, and you're getting more performance, but there are a few things about this motor you simply need to know. As we discussed previously, like taking the cylinder off before you install the kit to check it for burrs, flakes of metal to make sure your piston's not on backwards, to check your wrist pin clips to make sure they're fully seated, plus that along with not idling the bike for too long so it doesn't overheat, not riding it too slow, this motor likes to go faster, you know, things like that. That's why I recommend this to people who have built bikes before and are willing to do that kind of research. If you think you can handle it, then I would recommend this YD100 kit for both Category 1 and 2 builders. Guys, if you got some useful information out of this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you want motorized bike videos every week. Until then, ride safe.